in this historic day of for our nation we come here to this episode of after credits divided not by party line mind you or who we think is going to be fit to lead this country but as to the nature of what makes a movie good <laughs> do not be swayed by naysayers and blasphemers who try to dissuade you from the honest, simple truths of art. Sad. Y'all listen to me now. China. <laughs> y'all understand, I'm Whoa. looking out for all y'all. When I say that loving is damn good. It's one out of three opinions. Before we get into more of our actual thoughts on the film, uh, we just saw Loving, which is a new film directed by Jeff Nichols, who directed Mud and Midnight Special, which we both saw earlier this year and absolutely loved. It's one of my, yep. one of my favorite films of the year so far. Um, and it stores, tells the story of uh, an interracial couple in America in 1958. Uh, it's a white man played by Joel Edgerton and a black woman played by uh, Ruth Nega. Shit goes down, uh, they get arrested, they go to court, they try living in Washington. A lot of stuff happens, but ultimately it's about their case going to the Supreme Court. Obviously it's a very timely movie, it's a very important movie, but as for the actual storytelling of the movie, what did you think, uh, Brittany? Well, I was asleep for half of the movie, so that should say a lot in itself. I'm a big fan of Jeff Nichols, but I thought I, what I was really most disappointed about was his direction of the film. I thought it was very unspectacular. I felt that the two lead performances were great. There's a really uh, good uh, supporting character played by Nick Kroll, who's basically the lawyer who is taking them to Supreme Court. Uh, I thought he was fantastic. But just overall the film, I had a really hard time connecting with it emotionally. I felt the yeah. characters were very stale. I've heard both of your reviews before, and it is one out of every three critics review of this movie. It is all about Jeff Nichols telling the story of this married couple in what you think is a non-spectacular way. Midnight Special was a sci-fi thriller about a kid bringing down satellites from space and this is the story about a court struggle and people trying to get the most basic of rights so in my mind, it makes complete sense that it's told in the most basic way possible. This is a no-nonsense, no-frills movie that is extraordinarily patient. That, unlike Moonlight, the performances completely give away their character. I think both Edgerton and Naga are Academy Award material, especially Nega. She's the front runner for Best Actress in my mind. Before we go any further, spoiler alert, uh, if you haven't seen this film yet, um, click on the time code right here, or scroll to this time code, um, and you're going to get our non-spoiler mm -hmm. thoughts on the film, and the scores out of six stars. We're going to be going into spoilers, so once you do see the film, or if you just don't give a shit about spoilers, you can come back and watch our spoilers section. All right. Before we go any further, yeah. the couple's name is Richard and Mildred Loving. Yeah. They are real people. Yes, they the are story real is based off of a real case, Loving versus Virginia. Yes. People say this a lot about Oscar movies to the point that it really pisses me off, but I'm going to say this about this movie. I would have rather watched a documentary about this yeah. couple. It's not taking advantage of the format of cinema because it just feels like this could be a play. Outside of like two sequences, or three sequences that I thought were really good, the scene where they're ex they're putting her in the car, like when they're exchanging, like when the two cars drive drive by. Yeah. Um, the scene where the car's following Joel Edgerton, and then the last 10 minutes, I thought, that's what really swayed me on the movie, and like I'm still kind of deciding in my mind where I want to go with my score, but if I end up going positive, that's probably what's going to sway me, is that the last 10 minutes were really impactful. This movie should have like devastated me. Like there was a lady next to me that was crying. Wait, really? Yeah. No who, way. She was sitting she, like to the left and she was like, <laughs> and like I was trying to get past her because I like wanted to get out of the fucking movie. And, You're implying that well, if you, you take want some... something flashier. Well, no, because he's like if you take something like Manchester by the Sea or Moonlight, those are two very unspectacular like stories. It's like there's nothing like, you know, it's not like a big action movie, but it was the way that they were directed. Like I felt so connected to those characters. Also, there was just like kind of random stuff. Like Michael Shannon shows up in this movie for five minutes, and it's just <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it was cool to see Michael Shannon, but he's just kind of like, shit, I forgot I'm in this movie. <laughs> Richard's character also had some serious mumbling problem. I didn't understand half of what the man was saying. It took me half the movie to figure out what this woman's name was. <laughs> just because I heard... Do you have any thoughts on Michael Shannon in this movie? I'm in a photojournalism class right now, and Michael Shannon is a photojournalist for Life magazine. Whenever the lawyer played by Nick Kroll tells them that he wants to improve the profile of the case to increase their chances to getting to the Supreme Court, Michael Shannon is the photographer that comes down to their farmhouse and takes pictures of them. There is a five-minute masterclass on what a photojournalist should be. Someone that is in their world, but doesn't intrude. That is patient, it's just a but ready to capture those once in a lifetime moments that you will never be able to catch. Like, like yes, like them laughing watching TV and uh, Richard laying his head on Mildred's lap, or whenever she's talking to him about how she feels about the struggle and he captures the look on her face, which says everything. Fear, anxiety, determination, hope. The sequence was good. It was just the fact that it was Michael Shannon. It's like, oh shit, it's Michael Shannon. I think if they just cast, like, an unknown, it would have been more effective. Just, I don't think so, just because kind of, there's a scene where he's at the dinner table telling this great story in only the way Michael Shannon yeah. can. Well, it's kind of like, funny as shit. It was kind of like when Brad Pitt showed up at the end of 12 Years a Slave. It's like, oh fuck, it's Brad Pitt, <laughs> and it kind of takes you out of the movie for a moment. Michael Shannon is one of those actors that doesn't have as much of a profile that, as maybe that's, like yeah, a Brad Pitt. The thing is, maybe that's because we're like huge movie fans. Michael Shannon is pretty much the Bruce Campbell of, you know, yeah. Jeff Nichols movies. <laughs> I think the best performance in this movie was Nick Kroll. I remember when he when he came on screen, I kind of turned to you. I was like, "The fuck!" <laughs> I thought it was a really inspired casting choice, and because a lot of times you get these actors, comedic actors, who do, you know, dramatic roles, and it's kind of just for like the the shock value of it. I liked that he was kind of like an idealistic young lawyer, but he wasn't like a hot shot asshole. That was kind of like playing against type, and. He had some comedic elements, but it wasn't an inherently comedic character. And I thought his speech at the end was fantastic. What I think is that these are real life characters with a movie around them. When this couple's on screen, sure, you're not drawn in by Joel Edgerton's charisma. Yeah, he is a great actor though. He's soft spoken, he's shy as hell, but yeah. he has a temper. Ruth Naga is an idealist too. And she's driven by some sort of, oh, if I can help people with this, then yeah, let's go ahead and do it. She's non-assuming, but she knows what she needs to do to get shit done. And I'm finding all of this in here, and I think y'all are just lost because no one in Hollywood has the patience to make a movie like this anymore. It was never Gosh. like a really clear depiction yeah. of like what it was like to live in their family. I never they got. They didn't a... seem distraught at all. They're... So you're telling me the one scene where Joel Edgerton is in his farmhouse, completely isolated, and then he sees this car, the car of his best friend, rushing towards him. That his immediate shock of like getting all the kids inside the house, getting him running, okay, even though it was a fear. false alarm. Is that not an accurate depiction yeah, of what it's, it's like, like to live in that home? But then it was like, at the beginning, it's like, his wife goes to jail and he's like, fuck. And then he just goes back to like his house. And it's not about what he's showing. It's what he's actually doing. He's going to the courthouse trying to bail out his wife on a Saturday, even though they told him to wait till Monday. And he's smart. He understands that, you know, him getting in jail again is not going to help anybody. He's got a life to live. But you do see in his face just li individual little frustrations Sometimes. that are picking at him every single day. They're just incredibly subtle, and maybe I missed a bunch because I did fall asleep for a good part of this movie. It All right, well, fuck you guys then. <laughs> We're just gonna <laughs> stop this because I don't. To disagree. Uh, no, I'm not agreeing to disagree. You're still fucking wrong. Okay. If you look at like, you know, common what people are saying, you're right. Most people agree with you. Most people uh, love this movie. I'm. They're yeah, but they're not in this car. All right, fuckers. Final <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> this is so, he's so upset. Y'all know. Y'all know what this shit is. I think this is just a strong film. It doesn't have to be told in a way that, you know, makes these people anything more than what they are. Regular folks 
trying to just live their life and then dealing with the frustrations of a country that says, no, your life is invalid. Joel Edgerton and Ruth Naga are Oscar worthy. I think Jeff Nichols is one of those directors that's n not afraid to make a patient movie. That's not afraid to show life exactly how it is. No filters, no blue or purple color palettes, no <laughs> tracking shots or pans. There is a time and place for that. It does drag a lot, but there's too much good stuff to ignore here. So four and a half out of six, definitely go check this out. It was a good story to tell and it had potential, but I think the direction just fell flat story was too linear, characters weren't interesting at all. I'd give it a two. Wow. Yeah. That is very low. Yeah. Man. I'm sorry. Fuck you. Fuck you. No, no. Love no, you. I'm mad at you. you. I love you too. I'm mad at you. I always care who you are, where you're from, what you did, as long as you love. Go to hell. <laughs> God, I love the Backstreet Boys. Is that a statement you just <laughs> said right now? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, instincts better. Oh god, no. All right, Boys. now we're gonna have a fight. My These dad had. They literally had one song. They had a movie. Fuck their movie. Their movie was nominated for like multiple Razzies. Wait, what? Which movie? Spice, Spice World. World? She's defending that! <laughs> the person who gave Loving two stars is defending Spice World! I was pretty disappointed, just because I'm a big fan of Jeff Nichols. He's one of the few directors out there that kind of connects these sort of emotional themes, and he can really put it in any sort of environment. You know, Mud is a modern film, I mean, Night Special is sci-fi. I just didn't feel the emotional connection to this movie. I thought the two uh, lead performances were serviceable. There wasn't a scene when I really um, felt that any of them were doing anything extraordinary. I thought the dialogue was fine, the shot composition was just, it was just kind of basic. This is one of the hardest decisions I've ever made uh, in terms of positive and negative, because it's really hard for me to recommend this movie, but at the same time I don't want to say that it's a bad film. So I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to give this a three and a half. I don't think you'll be... Um, like disappointed if you watch it. If you're looking at this as like if you're reading like the Oscar buzz that's saying this, you know it's gonna be a Best Picture nominee. I don't think it's you know up to that caliber. But um, you know if you want uh, sort of drama like this um, and you're interested in the story and you didn't know about it before, it's a good sort of lesson about it. I guess I would have rather seen maybe a documentary about it. At the same time, I can't call it a bad film. If you like this video, please click the like button down below. Also below is the subscribe button where you can be the first to find out when new content's coming out. We've got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages down below. If y'all support loving, y'all comment in the comment section below. If not, keep your fucking mouth shut. Uh, so confrontational. Liam's blog, he's wrong. It's gonna be liammgahan.wordpress.com. You can read his slander about this movie over there. <laughs> Next time, we're gonna be checking out Arrival, yeah. the new alien contact language movie by Denise Villanueva. I think it's Denise Villanueva. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. know. I think it's Spanish. So Whatever. We're, okay. we're, yeah, d d you would know better than I would. We'll but. figure it out. Anyway, we're gonna be watching that next time, but until then, y'all have a good night. Stay safe, America. We're gonna... We're, it's all gonna be over soon. Yeah. And tomorrow we'll all just go to work and get on with our fucking lives. Because who gives a shit? For another four years. Yep. We're just ordinary people! <laughs>